I know it's an innovation showcase, and um, as much as I would love to get up here and talk about Hydrofacial, the company, and talk about our unbelievable 70% year-over-year growth and our crazy kegger uh, with two-year revenue at 52%, um, the fact that we were the first patented microdermabrasion system in the United States, uh, and we continue to innovate with patents. We've got over 22 pending right now. I kind of want to switch it up a little bit and talk a little bit, because I think this audience um, in this room, Hydrofacial is uniquely positioned to be one of the only omni-channel brands. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking to you guys about that. So I've been in aesthetics for over 20 years in non-surgical devices, and uh, I'm pretty proud of some of the cool stuff I've been lucky enough to be a part of. And I've also been very proud of the fact that in the non-surgical aesthetic market, it's always been a really big market. It's a big $10 billion market with this huge opportunity ahead of us and growing. And uh, when Clint was recruiting me to come over to Hydrofacial, one of the first things that I looked at is I went, my God, <laughs> for the first time in my career, I get to play in other markets. Um, not only in the aesthetics non-surgical market, which is that big $10 billion market, but also the spa market, which is almost twice as large. And then when you start to look at the beauty retail market, the size of the addressable market just blows up. And as many of you in this room know, I've kind of also spent my career being the doctor person, you know, fighting for the core. You're welcome. I've done a lot of that for many, many, many years. And uh, for the first time in my career, I don't, I don't have to do that anymore because Hydrofacial uniquely sits in the middle of this space where all things kind of work happily together. And I kind of want to talk to you about why. So Clint touched earlier on some of the trends that we're seeing, and we're spending a lot of our time and, and, and a lot of our money, quite frankly, on learning more about our consumers and where they live and where they shop and how they buy. And it's been really interesting because um, it is definitely trending younger as far as the men go in the, in the space. And we've seen, as Clint mentioned, you know, twice as many men enter the category in the last 12 months, which is, which is really exciting. Um, but more importantly, they all start their journey in different places. So when you, when you think about what that means, um, I've always thought, because I can't imagine having my skin treated anywhere but a doctor's office, but that's kind of where I sit as a consumer, but I'm, I'm not the only consumer. And one of the things that we're seeing and we're learning is that people start their skin health journey in many different places, and they're not loyal to any one particular place. So even when they have their dermatologist or plastic surgeon who they know and love and they trust, they still go back to retail beauty to buy some of their other products. And similarly, when they're on vacation, they're having spa services and skin services there as well. And so there's this healthy ecosystem of skin health that we can kind of have the ability to shift people around in and yet keep them loyal in your channel. So what's interesting is that they don't, it doesn't have to feel threatening to any any one channel. Um, I'll give you an example. I was having a meeting with the head of Sephora. Clint mentioned they are one of our largest customers. They do not have hydrofacial system itself, but they have a, a smaller kind of mini version of it, if you will. And um, I'd been meeting with her quarterly for about the last year and a half. And at our last meeting, she looks at me and she says, you know, Aaron, my beauty advisors are shaking me down uh, because they want a commission from those Botox companies. I'm like, wait, first of all, there's no such thing as those Botox companies, but uh, what are you talking about? And she says, well, because what's happening is that when people come in and have a perk treatment at Sephora, by their second treatment, they're asking our beauty advisors, what can I do for my lips? What can I do for, you know, should I get a little Botox? They don't understand exactly what they're asking because they are literally the neophyte in this space but they're graduating out. And so as they continue to learn and they continue to grow from having that first little taste of technology, they grow into the different channels and they move around in there. So as I said, I think, I think hydrofacial is kind of unique being able to live in all of these places happily and continue to feed that skin health um, system. But so whether you are on vacation at the Four Seasons and you want to have a hydrofacial, you can. Whether you want to have it after your workout at Equinox or whether you want to have it at your dermatologist or plastic surgeon's office to enhance anything else you're doing, you can do that. No, oh, by the way, it doesn't matter for the first time again, not to make this about me, but I'm totally going to make it about me. Um, for the first time again in my career, which is apparently the topic of my talk, 
uh, I don't have to talk about patient selection anymore, and I don't have to talk about managing their expectations, because the fact of the matter is, if you have skin, doesn't matter how old or how young, you should get a hydrofacial, and it doesn't matter what color it is, it doesn't matter um, how, any, any of that. If you have skin, you should be getting a hydrofacial, and oh, by the way, you can have it every 28 days, so that's pretty cool. And oh, by the way, when you get off the table, you see the result instantly. Also something relatively new to me in my career. So that's been very fun as well. So just to kind of close out, um, one of the other things that we do at Hydrofacial that I think is unique is um, we've set ourselves up to be a bit of a Keurig model, meaning that we've partnered. We've realized that we are not a skincare technology company. We, we don't have formulators on premises. And, um, and why would we want to compete with the many brands in this room that do that so well. So what we've done instead is partner with you guys. Um, and as Clint mentioned, we've got about seven or eight partnerships now and about 12 more launching soon, which allows us to be a bit of the Keurig system so that you're able, to, first of all, we're able to differentiate our channels so that someone who has a hydrofacial at the Four season has a different experience than if they had it at the doctor's office. Um, but it allows us to infuse really high quality medical grade ingredients into the skin um, and really partner with different companies in the industry, which is fun. So in closing, I just want to say thank you guys so much. It's been great. AAS, I hope you guys keep it up and keep it going because I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to work together and really engage um, across industry and, and banking and um, physician communities. So thank you. Thank you.